Hey folks, I'm RJ Byrne, and today in the soybean field, I'm going to talk how Intrepid controls soybean loopers and what you need to look for in your field. So in the soybean field here, this soybean field was sprayed uh, five days ago with Intrepid. And as you can see, we've got a few soybean loopers out here. we got um, a couple small ones right here, here, and here. And if you notice, we got a couple larger ones here, like this guy here, he's acting kind of real sluggish. And then if you see this one right here, this is a real good indicator that the Intrepid is beginning to work. As you can see, his color's beginning to change. He's actually starting to form uh, like this black layer behind his head here, the head capsule. And what is going on, since Intrepid is a insecticide that they have to eat and once they eat it they begin to quit feeding and then it takes several days sometimes for them to begin their premature molt the um and that's what's going on right here you can see this looper is actually beginning to begin his molt phase and so what's happening is is basically the skin is beginning to shed over that head capsule which eventually will prevent him from eating and he'll eventually die now you can see we've got some other worms here. They still seem like they're pretty active. And you've got, you know, these bigger worms here, like right here, and he's looks like he's beginning to die. But you're like, why do I still have these active worms like I do right here? Well, let's look at the soybean canopy. So here is a soybean canopy. And as you can see, it is very dense foliage. And as you know, Soybean loopers, they start down at the base down here from the ground and work their way up. And when you're trying to spray a canopy like this, you want to use a nozzle selection that is going to give you a good fog, uh, a fogging spray to get it down in the canopy. And you want to blast it in there and fog it in to get it down into the canopy. If you don't, what happens is you're getting the insecticide up here on the upper foliage of the, of the soybean plant. The soybean looper is down at the base of the plant. As he comes up, he begins to get some size, and then he has to feed on the upper canopy here to get some of the insecticide to die. Any insecticide that you use for soybean loopers that are going to control them, they've got to eat it in order to die. Um, here's another, uh, this is a little soybean looper right here, you can see right here, sorry, just caught my attention. However, what I'm trying to tell you is, when you have thick canopy like this, as you know in the past, it gets difficult to control the soybean looper when you have high populations. Some things you can do to help out, use nozzles that create a fine mist or finer droplet size. Hollow cone nozzles is my number one choice. Behind that would be flat fans. Things that, and things that use bigger droplet size, like air induction nozzles, they make what I call the basketball. And if you try to get a basketball down in here and get good coverage, it's not going to do it. If you try and throw golf ball size or BBs down here, they're going to be able to get in here and give you good coverage to get down to help control these soybean loopers. So you come back to this situation right here that on my shake cloth. And when you see these numbers like here, and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm close to the threshold and I just sprayed, what do I do? Well, remember, Intrepid takes a little bit of time for these worms to completely die. But once they get Intrepid, they quit feeding within a few hours. And eventually, after a few days, they will begin to die. So the key is, when you have dense canopy closure like this, you need to be checking your fields every so often, every couple of days, to help find out where these uh, loopers are and if they're getting the insecticide or not. If you got any questions, feel free to contact me at the information below. Thanks.